nasa ikaanim po tayong yugto. Ano po ibig sabihin ng ikaanim na yugto? Tapos na po isang buwan. Ang tema po ng Catholic family, three months. So nasa second month po tayo. Yung first month, five weeks. Tapos itong second month, another four weeks. Pagkatapos ito, yung third month, another four weeks. Thirteen weeks po ang tawag dito sa isang season. So ngayon, sa ikaanim na yugto, payagan po natin uli ang banal na kasulatan ng Panginoon sa pamagitan ng sulat ni San Pablo, siya po ang magbibigay liwanag sa ating pag-uusapan sa araw na ito. Put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has a grievance against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you must also do. And over all this, put on love, that is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom you teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. Wives, be subordinate to your husbands, as is proper in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and avoid any bitterness toward them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this is pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, so they may not become discouraged. Ayon, narinig po natin ang sulat ni San Pablo sa mga Kristiyano ng taga Colossus. Colossae means ang tawag. Actually, hindi nila nakatagpo si Paul. Unlike yung sulat ni Paul sa Ephesians, nagpunta doon si Paul. Pero mayroon silang balita. Mayroon silang alam tungkol kay San Pablo bilang apostoles. Bilang sa tagapagpamalita ng mabuting balita tungkol kay Yesu Kristong muling na buhay. Pero dahil dito, sa inyong nakita, sa inyong narinig, sa text ng scripture, iba sa inyo nakapagbasa, eh, tila pero mix up sa kanilang kaalaman tungkol kay Kristo. So itong si San Pablo, na hindi rin naman niya nakita si Yeso Kristo, pero natanggap niya ang tradisyon mula sa mga apostoles. Gusto niyang ayusin na naaayon sa tradisyon ng apostolic faith. Kaya nga po meron tayong apostolic creed, apostles creed. Ano ba ang gusto niyang sabihin na may konting mix-up sa kanilang kaalaman na si Kristo yung taga-Nasaret, si Kristo yung nabuhay sa mundong ito, siya ang Christ, the risen one, siya ang Panginoon. At ano itong ginawa ni Yesu Kristo sa pamamagitan ng kanyang buhay at muling pagkabuhay na nakatagpo siya ng ilang apostoles maliban kay Pola maliban sa mga taga-Kolose anong gusto niyang ipahiwatig sa atin? Pagmamahal ng Ama yun po ang napakahalaga bakit? kasi sa pagmamahal ng Amang ito maiiba ang buhay nila hindi magiging pareho ang kanilang pamumuhay sa dati nilang buhay pero magiging iba din ang kanilang pamumuhay sa kanilang mga kahanggan, mga kapitbahayan, sapagat sila ay followers of the Christ. Alam nyo, at this point po, pababasa ko isang portion na, 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 na isama sa aming panalangin this past days. Isang sulat po ng isang napakatagal ng Kristiyano uh, at preacher ang pangalan ay Dionetus. 
So, ilalagay ko upo sa isang uh, text at babasahin bo voice over natin para ating mainawaan anong ibig sabihin ng kaibahan ng isang tunay na Kristiyano. Christians are indistinguishable from others, neither by nationality, language, or customs. They inhabit no separate cities of their own, or speak a strange dialect, or follow some outlandish way of life. And yet, there is something extraordinary about their lives. They live in their own countries as though they are only passing by. They play their roles as citizens but labor under all the disabilities of aliens. Any country can be their homeland, but for them, their homeland, wherever it may be, is a foreign country. They live in the flesh, but they are not governed by the desires of the flesh. They pass their days upon earth, but they are citizens of heaven. Obedient to the laws, they yet live on a level that transcends the law. Christians love all men, but all men persecute them, condemn because they are not understood. They are put to death, but raised to life again. They live in poverty, but enrich many. They are totally destitute, but possess an abundance of everything. So yun po, yung buhay kristyano. Saan po natin ito isa sa buhay? Kung di, sa ating mga kapamilya. Kaya nga po ako dito ngayon, sa tabi ng Santo Niño. Kasi kung yung ating limang yugto, ang kanyang punterya, focus po, ay tungkol sa mag-asawa, ito po ika-anim hanggang ika na yugto, ay tungkol po sa pamilya na. Nabubuo mag-asawa at kanlang mga anak. Sino po bang mag-asawa? Ang husband and wife, kundi sila yung father and mother kung meron silang anak. Sila po ang haligi. Masabi natin, ang tatay ay haligi ng tahanan, ang nanay ang tanglaw, ilaw, liwanag ng isang tahanan. Hindi po. Kailangan ng isang bahay na sa apat na haligi. Dalawang Paan ang ama, dalawang paan ang nanay. At sa haliging ito, naka, para nakasalalay ang buhay, ang growth, ang maturity ng mga bata. Ano po ang mapupulot ng mga bata sa ganitong sitwasyon? Yung pagmamahal ng mag-asawa, husband and wife, magiging kanilang parang huwaran sa pagmamahal nila sa kanilang magulang. Tuloy, yung pagmamahal ng mag-asawa, nakita na reciprocal, magiging reciprocal ang pagmamahal ng mga bata sa kanilang magulang. Kasi mahal din naman sila ng kanilang ama't ina. Ano po ang parang kabuuan, sabi ni San Pablo sa mga taga-kolose? Ano ba ang characteristics ng Christian living in a family. Paano ba itong love of the Father can be transmitted and related to them? Basahin ko po para hindi po ako mawala. Heartfelt compassion. Kindness. Humility. Gentleness. Patience. Forgiveness. Forbearance. Pito po. Nakatangi ang pamumuhay kristyano. Love is not just I love you eh. Andyan po ang forbearance. Yung bang steadfast in the form of gulo, ibang ugali, hindi kagad kinokorek, pinagbibigyan, pinagpapasensyahan. At dahil po dito, importante po yung heartfelt compassion, yung kindness, yung patience tapos kailangan din po daw ang gentleness pero para mangyari yan ang parang bottom line of love humility kitang kita yan kay Jesus Cristo sabi ni San Pablo 
At yan ang dapat maging parang relasyon ng mag-asawa makokopya ng mga bata. So, papa natin ihahad over ito? Itong Christian virtues sa ating mga anak. Kundi kung tayo nabubuo sa inang simbahan. Sa mas malaking sambahayan, greater than the family. And in the church, we are given that love of the church, of our pastors, of our bishops, of the community of Christians. And where is it there, therefore? If not through the sacraments, through the Word of God, through the study of the Word of God and the sacraments. Then and then, our children will become truly able to accept the same teaching na apostles na hindi natin nakita, kagaya ng mga kolose na hindi naman nakita si Pablo, pero tinranspit sa kanila sa pamamagitan ng isang sulat, pat lalo na sa kanilang mga halimbawa sa isa't isa. Ngayon po, pagbigyan natin ang isang life testimony ng isang tagabagyo po na isinulat sa akin, ipo-voice over po natin. Siya po ay si Annie Salvador. In building a Christian family, parents have a million tasks. A guiding verse names a few. Practicing the virtues, readiness in forgiving, building love and harmony, creating peace and unity, grooming wisdom, gratefulness and worship, modeling obedience and submission, developing self-control in providing discipline. A quick review of my own experience as a mother of five points to a few more. Acquiring effective problem-solving and coping skills, fostering interdependence and independence, balancing marital with parental responsibilities, learning to truly listen, and so, so many more. Knowledge and skill for good times and bad. We parents need to constantly be aware of content. What is happening and process? How is it happening in order to use each moment well? We are called to be deliberate and purposeful even as we need to make innumerable snap decisions and instantaneous responses. Not to mention the really hard choices. It's a tough call, a lofty occupation, a noble participation in the Lord's work on our children. We learn to do by doing is one of my favorite quotes. I am a hungry reader. When I want to learn something, I immediately read about it. So I read up a lot on parenting. But that was just step one. I didn't really learn until I started trying. And so, realizing that putting action into aspiration is an aid towards the perfection we are called to. I task myself with a pre premeditated ongoing personal project to raise my standards of loving. This life work has been particularly instrumental in my journey as a mother. The only manual of parenting available to me as a young mother was the informal yet powerful example of my own parents. It was hefty. As manuals go, in its contents illustrated strong as well as poor standards. I needed to consciously wade through those lessons, adapting the ones appropriate for raising my own children and forgoing the rest. For instance, growing up, my siblings and I communicated using sarcasm, whether we were conversing casually, joking around or discussing serious matters, we were snide and sharp with one another. As a young mother, I didn't realize I had brought that style into dealing with my children until I saw in their faces that I was hurting them with my words and tones. That had to change. I worked on being more conscious, catching my sarcasm earlier and earlier and replacing it with more affirmative speech. Another project was in the area of discipline. I punished by spanking. I explained to friends that I was spanked as a child and it turned out okay. 
until one of them asked me, How do you know? That too went into my life work, which covered attitudes as well as behaviors. To illustrate, my father was a warrior. He could turn everything into a problem, and he would brood, burdened with it. Soon after I recognized the same in myself, I made an effort to entrust more and more areas of my life to the Lord and to create reframes so that more than anything else, even in truly worrisome situations, I could still be grateful. Changes such as this benefited my children more than anyone else. Life being a parent, making an effort is never ending. I need to fight the particular temptation to be self-satisfied, to rest on my little laurels with a big pat on my back and a grand self-congratulatory celebration. Another favorite quote is Pope Francis' exhortation, Hagan Leo, in which he called on the faithful to shake things up. When I find myself indulging in smug contentment, I shake myself out of complacency. There's more life work to do. Let's go. James Clear, author of The Surprising Power of Small Habits, said that if we improve by 1% each day, we would be 37 times better within a year. My children will unanimously attest that my annual rate is way lower than that. At best, I exemplify the classic two steps forward, one step back. I am but clay. My efforts are flawed and my failures plenty. But looking back, I see real positive changes over time. Despite difficulties, making an effort, along with inner reflection, sincere prayer, and truly leaning on God has helped me stay on track. In good days and bad, in success and error, in high spirits and low, I submit my yes, my personal fiat, to the Lord's hand. There's no better place, and the Good Shepherd, who tends to me and feeds me well beyond my needs, who tirelessly seeks me out whenever I stray, who guards me lovingly and sees me through my dark valleys, rewards my trust. I am a work in progress. I remain imperfect, but less so.